Hi, Matt. Hello. He- he- hello, Night Owl in the dark. Ooh. Exactly. Uh-huh. Um, we're gonna we're gonna be getting going here. So uh, we're gonna be uh, we're gonna be making we're trying to make a rotary table from scratch. So instead of a typical instead of a typical flat jig, right? We're gonna be making a roundy boy jig that's going to turn by itself. It's gonna be fun. You ready, Matt? I'm so ready. Let's do this. All right. All right. So uh, let me share my screen here. We got uh, we got a lot of people in the chat here. Just gonna say a quick hi, Jack, Bill, the man Jimmy and Miranda, and let's see, Rogerio. Hope I said that right. Probably not. Donna. Got love in the chat. Hope you guys are all good. All right, let's uh, let's pull this up. God, this thing is rigged so crappy. <laughs> My exhaust, it's ridiculous. Sorry, man. All right, so um, we're going to go through this kind of step by step. Um, I'm going to throw some tips in there, and uh, we're going to we're going to build from scratch a rotary jig. Kyle, what made you want to build a rotary jig? Efficiency, comfort. Uh, you can do more with less space. The list goes on and on, my man. And also because light burn has it coming out in a little bit, like. It's true. Just it's true. Beta. It just hit beta. Just hit beta. So at some point, it will hit public release. And uh, then you guys can do this without having to go to EasyCAD. There you go. So we heard rumors. Laser <laughs> said, Am I feeling any better? No. I'm forever sick. Yeah, Matt. Uh, Matt. Matt's. Matt's gonna hang out and uh, cheer us on, and uh, answer cor- questions. Correct me when necessary. Answer questions. Yeah. Mostly just try to bother Kyle. Make this take way longer than it should. All right. So, you guys can see my light burn. Um, I'm actually on my CO2 gantry machine here. You might have noticed, and that's for good reason. Um, however. We are going to switch back to my gantry, but I'm going to intentionally switch to a different machine to set the jig up because the workspace of my CO2 gantry is like $5.99 by $9.99. And one of the tips I'm going to show you isn't super comfortable when using weird, odd numbers like that. So, so just the tip at least from design. Is that what I heard? For design purposes, I'm switching to a work size bed of 300 by 300 intentionally. Um, We'll switch back. I'll explain the process here. So uh, first thing we got to do, right? Um, I'll explain my train of thought here. We have a rotary. And that rotary is a truck rotary for for most Galvo machines, unless you pick up uh, like a roller style one. So... You got three a three chuck rotary here. Um, you can use the same principles I'm about to show for a four chuck if if you have one of those. Um, so we're gonna start by creating the the fixture in the middle of the jig that is going to accept the rotary, so it can hold on to it, right? So first thing we're gonna do, um, we actually need to I I need to go get that again and measure it. Um, we need to figure out how big the teeth are that we're going to fit it into. And then we're going to, uh, duplicate it into a circular pattern of three. So what if people aren't a fan of teeth and instead they're like, they got the pins or something instead. 
Uh, like, does it matter? If, same principle. It, same it's principle. same principle. Yep. Just because I know people have certain ones, like some people have the pins, some people same have principle. the principle. So okay. I don't, I don't know how well you'll be able to see. Maybe I can. Zoom I got in. you. Okay, perfect. Thank you, Matt. So you guys can see here. This is actually not square on the inside. It's kind of like, um, like an arrow tip almost. It kind of points in almost like a triangle pointing into the center. Um, I'm not even going to worry about that. I'm literally going to square it off um, to make it as simple as possible. It's irrelevant what the middle of, of the design looks like because we're pinching it going outwards. So, yep. And, and the outward side is flat. So, oh, right. Measuring. So, measuring. we got 12. By the way, while he was measuring, I was supposed to be helping him cut one tonight too and duplicating the process, but I don't have the material I thought I had. So Silly goose. Yeah, right, I thought so. I had quarter inch. I'm pretty sure my wife threw it away. I blame her. So if you missed what I said, it is 12 millimeters by 24. I'm going to make it a little bit bigger. I'm going to make it 30 because I want it to be easy to slot in and we can always open up the jig if we need to. So that gives us a little wiggle room to make it easier to, to fit everything in together. So again, for me, it's 12 by 30. Just measure yours and if you have the the round like dowel style ones for rings if you can point it straight up this will still work for you um just you need to change the shape of how it fits together so let's uh let's proceed now what i'm gonna do on the left hand side here there's an array tool which is the squares it's three by three squares and then you have a round array tool, circular array. So we're going to go ahead and open that up. Actually, before we even do that, eh, yeah, it's it's irrelevant right now. So zoom in, start and end, we, we need to be 0 and 360 because that's where it tells the circle to start and finish. So to make a full cir circle, we're starting at 0, ending at 360. Um, we want three copies because there's three teeth we need to fit it into which means this is going to automate how many steps we have. So it's going to create an item every 120 degrees. And we're going to rotate objects. And yeah. Um, oh, I did it wrong. One sec. Um, I'm going to use Y. There we go. No. So here's the interesting thing. It doesn't matter how much you shift the Y. It just tells the chuck how much it's going to have to be open. So the spacing is kind of irrelevant. But if I zoom in, You don't want you don't want them to be overlapping like this. You want there to be enough space there where there's something for it to grab onto and fit in without affecting the structural rigidity of it. So this is good enough spacing, and we're going to be pinching outwards anyway. But again, the weight of whatever you're putting on the jig is going to be resting in this. So if you're doing something heavy like slate or like 150 pens or something crazy, um, you want to keep in mind the 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 strength and and where you're cutting out the material. If you cut out everything really close together like this, there's not going to be a whole lot of structural rigidity in the middle of your jig. So again, angle doesn't matter because it's all pointing into the center of the three shapes uh, when it creates it. And um, it's just relevant in terms of how much you have to open the jig for it to fit into. Which, by the way, okay. these are not the most fun things to key. No, no, they're not, but that's okay. We'll get there. So we use the circle array tool. We, we have our, our jig now, right? 
And what I'm going to do, I'm going to group these together so they can't shift apart. Okay, so now I can grab onto any one of these. It highlights them all and I can move it around. All right. So what we're going to do now, um, just for um, kind of organizational purpose, just for organizational purposes, I'm going to make a tool path using T1 for the layer. I'm going to make a circle. And if you hold control and select, um, sorry, control and shift, uh, you can make a circle. All right. Now, it doesn't matter where I made this. If I made it over here, that's great. Um, but the idea is you want it to be centered up on each other. You want it to be centered up with each other so that um, it just makes life easier. Um, ew, gross. Um, it's because it's a blong. Whatever. It's just there visually. So what we're gonna do is we're the story of my life. We're gonna center. Yeah. We're gonna center this up. So the center of the shape is at 150 by 150. And that's important because um we're on a 300 millimeter work bed and we're going to be creating a shape that essentially uh is the outline or the cutout of what we're going to be putting inside this jig. So I'm just going to make an arbitrary box here. We're going to make it. Um, we're going to make it a black square uh, on the the zero zero layer, and I'm going to grab it. Now, let's make a, a business card jig, right? Um, so essentially, we want to um, make a business card fit into this box. So in terms of width, we're going to be looking at. Uh, I believe it's 86. Let me grab a business card. Yeah, we're going to call it 86.3 for a little wiggle room, but not a ton. And for height, I believe it's 55. Yep. And now what we can do is we can center this up to our jig fixture here. Um, but here's the thing. The closer it is to the center of the jig, the less items we're going to be able to fit into the jig. So think of this as a circle, right? If I make a circle, if we put this toward the inside, we're only going to be able to fit maybe six or seven of these, right? Well, if I spread it out here, it's closer to the outside of the circle, we're going to be able to fit more. So I'm going to center it up to this using the centering tool up at the top. And then what I'm going to do is use the circular array again. Again, starting at zero, ending at 360. We're going to ignore steps uh, for copies. We're just going to go up. Let's say we want 10. Okay. Now we have to set the, the center manually. So if we set it to 150 manually, we're going to have it centered up. So now when this rotates around, it's always going to be lined up. Because what we're going to do is we're going to be lining up the first card underneath the laser. And now every time it rotates, it's going to rotate to the same spot because the card is in the same position in that circle. Okay. Now, I need to recenter these. There we go. Jimmy says he's confused, oh. but what else is new? He said. So that's about right. <laughs> um, uh, pro tip, because I mix this up all the time. If you highlight the item you want to move and then highlight the item you want to align it to, that's how you, you properly do the selection order on that. I always get it wrong the first time. 
and then I have to remind myself to do it right. Um, but anyways, so let's go ahead and do that now. So circular array, we're going to do it all over again. We want 10 cards to fit on this because they go nice and fast. You don't want to babysit it. Let's do 10 cards at a time. So you only have to change them out once every two minutes instead of once every 15 seconds, right? We have to set the center again, which is the center of the work area because we've centered our uh, the, the, the tooth holes for our rotary. And now we know that everything is nice and centered up and will fit together. Um, if you do not use rotate object, copy, object copies, by the way, you're gonna end up with something like this. And when it rotates around the circle, the card, uh, the business cards or whatever object that you're creating this for isn't going to line up uh, when it rotates around the circle because it's rotating kind of like a cup would around a, a rotary, right? So it, it's not going to be in the right position. Um, so you need to do it like this. It needs to be spread out like a fan. So we're going to click OK. And you know what? I don't like how close these are normally, but it's going to fly because this is going to be a dual layer design so that we can easily fit these out. Okay, so here's another thing that I want to do. Um, we need to make the out, outside outline. So if I select this, um, yeah, we'll do it this way. So if I make a uh, circle, again, holding control and shift, it's going to make a um, an appropriately perfect circle um, that is perfect in every dimension. If you don't hold shift, it's going to shift around. And if you don't hold control, it's not going to pull out from the center. So it just makes life easier to do both. And again, what we're going to do is highlight everything in the middle. We're going to group it together. Hold uh, using control G and I'm going to grab everything and center it up. Now I made the, the circle too big. I'm going to hold control. So it adjusts from the center. And when you grab from the corner, it's going to keep everything, uh, within dimension. So this is where we're at. So now essentially, um, before we move on, uh, we need to make some design considerations, right? This is going to be a, a double layer uh, jig. So that means we're going to have a base layer and we're going to have a layer on top that holds the item in place. The bottom layer holds it from falling out um, and gives it a little more structural rigidity. And now we, we're kind of encompassing everything. So what we're going to do... Um, is, uh, sorry, lost my train of thought here. We're going to duplicate the design. Is it <laughs> being double layered? Yes. So uh, I'm going to group this just so it doesn't shift around on us, right? Because we, we want to keep everything kind of together in one piece. Control D with everything highlighted. You now have a second copy. I'm going to center these up to each other because I'm OCD like that. Um, and now um, we obviously don't want to cut the cards out on both layers because then we're just going to have square holes going all the way around and nothing to hold the cards in. So on this side, oh, I need to ungroup it. On this side, we're going to highlight this. We're going to deselect the center. Oh. I need to ungroup it again. Attempt number 45. <laughs> uh, we're going to turn that into a toolpath for now. Because um, we want to know where it's going to be. So this is... No matter what. Yes. So this is functionally going to be our... Um, plate. Our base plate. So all we want it to do is hold everything in 
and we want it to be um, to be able to accept our rotary tool. That's it. That's all it's got to do. Now, um, because I'm extra, I want to be able to be able to get my, my fat sausage fingers into the rotary tool or into the rotary jig to easily get these cards out. Because when they're in a slot, you you end up bending them up. Or, or messing them up or folding a corner over and bending up the metal or rippling them uh, if you try and pull them out when they're wedged in. So I want to avoid that. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to show you a little trick here again. I'm going to move this off to the side because it's, it's where we want it to be for now. I'm going to group this and move it again. And we're going to center that up. And the reason why we're centering it is because it, again, keeps the center into the into the center of the workspace. So we know the exactly where the center is it, using the coordinate system. Now, what I'm going to do, if you follow along here, you can see that you end up getting this little uh, kind of, I guess I could describe it as a heartbeat line, right? Well, it doesn't even have to be perfectly centered. I'm just going to pick a spot here and I'm going to hold control and shift and I'm going to make a hole this, the size big enough to get my fingers in there and pop the cards out. Okay. And we're going to change that to um, the zero zero layer again, because that's going to be our cut layer. We want this to cut out and I'm going to duplicate that and send that up here. Again, it doesn't have to be perfect. It just has to be big enough for us to get two fingers in there to, to pull a card out. We don't even have to do two. We could do one, but you know, again, I'm extra. Just do what you so, prefer. Jeez, Matt. So I'm talking about like your your thumb and your forefinger for grabbing from yes. those sides. Yes. Kyle, <laughs> Jesus Christ, dude, this is not. So we're gonna we're, <laughs> we're gonna get rid of these, and but Kyle, we spent all this time setting this up, so that's okay. This is why we centered this into the, the middle of the workspace. So we know right here's 150 by 150 on the X, Y axis. And we're going to use the circular array tool again after we group our cutouts. We're I guess is so many people have even looked at this array tool before. Uh, I'm going to be honest. I really had very few reasons to use it other than to make cool designs. Yep. <laughs> um, because but the reason okay. I'm saying that, by the way, is Jack in the shop said, OMG. <laughs> so, <laughs> just saying. So, yeah. Now, again, um, I'm intentionally going through it in this way to show um, the things that you can think about when you're creating a design. Uh, you can work with multiple layers when you're working with the array tool. You can decide you don't like something and go backwards without having to rebuild everything. And you can make those design considerations um, without having to, again, start over or uh, mess with the design and you can keep it proportional. So all the layers fit back together again. Yeah. Um, and so one more thing too is I'm, I'm talking through it. What's up? Um, one more thing too, is you could actually design this. If you're somebody who does like get, I know like uh, the jig that I have, cause I actually have one that I paid for because I didn't know how to do this a long time ago and I'm still learning. Um, but I've actually seen it where other people have made this in the base plate. Uh, the cuts are in the base plate so they can actually poke their finger up through the bottom. That way they can just grab it from the top and just be like, boop, 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 you know? Mm -hmm. So just a yep. thought too, for people who are looking at different ways to do this, you could do this from the top where your fingers can go down in and grab, or you could actually yep. cut this from the base plate and pop it out. If you wanted to have a, uh, base plate just for this. Like if yeah. this is bread and butter for you. Yep. Uh, another thing too is, is uh, instead of putting it on the side so you can pinch it, you could do a cutout on the end so you could pull them out from the end as it rotates around. There's so many options. Um, it's, it's all about what you want, what's going to work for you and your setup. And the nice part about this is you could even cut it out on cardboard if you don't want to use good material like quarter inch ply or backer board. And you could test it out and see if it works for you. Um, so the sky's the limit and don't be afraid to, to play with it. So we're going to go ahead and confirm this. This is how, we, how we're how we going to go with it from, from here. Now, 
Um, because I'm extra, you might have found, um, I'm going to go ahead and put this back over here because maybe I want to stick my sausage fingers all the way through the jig so I can pinch it out from the top uh, and still get my fingers through to the bottom. I'm going to ungroup this. I'm going to grab one of these and duplicate it. And I'm going to drop it right on top of this one. And Lightburn has the snap feature. It'll snap right on top of it. So if it doesn't do that for you, you have it turned off. Yeah, uh, incapable of wondering like this. how you're just like that good. Yeah, no, I'm not I'm not that good. That's the thing. Um, so you can uh, when it's ungrouped and you only have the one item here, you can select both. And if you center it up, it'll center it up. So if you're working with something where you put the cutout on the end, that's not going to work for you because now you've changed the width dimensions. Um, so you may have to use a different alignment method like horizontal and, and do it differently. But um, I digress. Uh, your mileage may vary. Uh, now what we're going to do is we're going to hide the, the black layer here. We're going to delete this because oh, we have to ungroup it. We're going to grab the, the red outline here because we don't need it anymore. And we're going to delete that. We're going to bring our main layer back. And I'm going to uh, kind of modify this a little bit. So if we run a cut like this, we're going to be, um, it's going to be inefficient. Um, we've now, we would now have three cuts where we would only need one around the outline. So uh, now we're going to incorporate the Boolean weld tool. Okay. Uh, the weld tool can only do two objects at once. So uh, we're, we're getting a, a whole bunch of uh, tools in this fun little project here, right? So I'm going to go ahead and grab these two. We're going to weld it. Uh, you'll notice if you mouse over it, you get a shortcut key. And because we're welding this um, and, and we're getting proficient with Lightburn, we can just use the shortcut. Control W, uh, and we're going to do it for both of these. And again, the reason why we have to do them separately is because you can only weld two items at once, and they have to be vectors. Um, and guess what we're going to do now, Matt? We're going to grab these and get rid of them, and almost like we've done this before. We're going to set the center again like we did before, and that's it. Uh, if you mess with the step value here, this is the angle it has to rotate from the center in order to get to each item. You're going to mess up the overlap. So don't do that. Okay? So just let this calculate on its own. It will change based on how many copies you're doing. So all you have to worry about is the number of copies you want, start and end being set properly, and the center being set properly. And that's it. Click OK. Now we have circular cutouts in the base plate, so we can get all the way through the base plate and the top when we go to pinch these out uh, for comfort. And that's it. Um, I'm going to go ahead and group these up. I'm going to make sure this is grouped. It is not. And here's the fun part. Let's make sure that everything still overlaps. Looks like it overlaps. I think we're good. So I'm going to grab one of these. We're going to shift it off. And um, so there's one more thing, right? So we have our base plate and we have our top plate. Um, what if in a month you haven't used this and you don't remember what it's for or your wife likes to clean out your shop uh, or spouse or significant other? And when they don't know what something is, they throw it away. Well, we can fix that by labeling it. So I'm just going to call this the business card jig, if I could type, version one. I'm just going to kind of rotate this around. We could even make it a little bit smaller.
and it doesn't need to be fancy. And the other fun part, you'll notice when we were in the array tool earlier, I'll show you again, the step value that it gives you when you create one. This is again, the angle that it rotates every time it moves to the next card. Okay. So if uh, you wanted to be prepared and organized, and I'll explain why later, you can write the step angle in if you wanted to. So again, not necessary. I'm just extra like that. Um, and we're going to set the text uh, with everything on here. We need to go over the cuts and layers to make sure that they're assigned properly. Um, anything in black we're going to be using as a cut. Um, anything we're going to set blue to an engrave. And um, that's it. That's all we got to worry about. So what you have to do now, because I'm not cutting this out on the, on the fiber, I'm going to cut change machines because we're we're done needing a, a nice convenient workspace um i'm gonna bring it over to my co2 and we're just gonna drop this in here and this is now ready to go and before i proceed um matt do we have any questions in chat that are uh Hang, Jimmy was telling uh, you to use the array tool back. again. <laughs> nope. Everybody's following I along. Mean, we can make some crazy patterns with the array tool. Just, you know, set set some stuff to fill, and you got like a crazy Mandela thing going on. Mass produce some al aluminum uh, custom Pokemon cards. Just gotta make your own art and uh, and designs, and you could create you know Pokemon yourself. That is true. Let's see. So so we've got laser engraving. Oh. Yep. Well, Michael said you guys are on some super duper nerd stuff tonight. <laughs> So I guess that means I guess that means you made it at, back home from uh, Las Vegas, Michael. I'm glad you got home safe. <laughs> <laughs> uh, good oh. to see you, Mike. Emergencystop.net. <clears throat> <laughs> All right. And, so yeah, there you go. Oh, good, more questions? Hit me with them. No, I was the By the way, I All saw right. earlier. Um, let's see. Rank mentioned. Is he just saying things to get Matt to respond? <laughs> Sausage finger comments. He's making this so <laughs> difficult tonight. I would say he's making it hard, but Miranda already said I'm about to be fired. And I haven't even been hired yet, <laughs> so that's probably not good. Um, and then to this person whose name I, I will absolutely mess up. Anyone can help me make a black mark uh, by fiber laser engraving. I am finding you the link right now. Which is why I'm so quiet to the uh, yeah. black, um, black thing. So I'll post that. Thank you, Matt. Um, it we call it here. Uh, Alex has a method called ZMark. Um, there, there will be a video uh, in chat for you. Uh, thank you to Matt. So um, back to the project, right? So we have all the 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 layers set the way we want. Um, the black layer is going to be cut out. So we're going to end up with, you know, a base plate with holes in it for, for pulling cards out. And we got a spot for our rotary to fit into. And then over here, we have a spot for the business card to be held with. And also we, we incorporated our little extra cutout hole edge here. So we can go all the way through and grab it from the top or the bottom. And we got a label cause we're awesome. And that's it. So now we need to apply our layer settings. So I said it before, I'll say it again. You could do this with any material you want. You can do it with wood, like quarter inch ply. Uh, if you're doing something really light, you could do like eighth inch ply, though your mileage is going to vary. Um, I like using backer board because it's cheap. 
Um, you can get a whole sheet for 15 bucks and it is sturdy and stable. It doesn't really warp um, unless you put something really super heavy on it. Um, so if, if you want to save your real nice plywood for engraving and projects, uh, that's my recommendation. You can get it at like Home Depot for 15 bucks for a full four by eight sheet. And they'll even cut it to size for you to fit on your bed. Um, and you can even do this with and a diode by the way, or a CO2 gantry. I was going to say That's I've used um, the one that I have set up for tonight. Like, so I've already got one, like I said, made before when I had paid for this because I didn't know all these cool tricks. Um, and the one I have is made out of quarter inch acrylic, uh, which is a little overkill for a business card. Like quarter inch acrylic is great for um, slate coasters and stuff like that, which Kyle's already kind of mentioned, but you, d mm -hmm. you can save some money instead of getting cast. You can get extruded, um, which cuts really nice. And you don't really need to mm -hmm. work on this. Uh, you don't have to. So that's just a way to, to I mean, look at if that. If you need to make label, you can sharpie it. Oh, absolutely. And that's what I was going to say, too. Is mean, you could literally just yeah. stencil it. You could sharpie it. Uh, but the base plate can be extruded. Um, what was I going to say? Uh, quarter inch. And just to save some money, you could probably do like 3 16 or even like 1 8 for some of the certain things. You've got like the items like uh, pencils or business cards. So you can save some money that way. Um, you know, get creative. Yeah. Now, I know a lot of our community um, started with either a fiber or a CO2 Galvo or or they really dove in on a UV. Um, and they don't have a gantry. Well, in terms of cutting out, I wouldn't recommend cutting something out like this on a Galvo. But if you invest like 150, 250 bucks into a diode even... You could cut out some simple jigs with a diode on some thin plywood or um, even cardboard. If you're doing something thin and light, like uh, let's say pencils or business cards or something like that, you just you you're trying to be more efficient. You could absolutely get started with with a diode, and and you can still cut these out no problem. Uh, you might only be able to cut one of these layers out at a time, depending on how big your jig is going to be. Uh, and that's also fair and true for a CO2, you know, bed sizes are, are what they are, but, um, there's options. You don't have to invest a ton to be able to unlock this. If you're only on a Galvo right now, um, if you need recommendations, if, if you haven't gone the gantry route on anything yet, um, check out the buying guide or check out some of the reviews on, on our channel or whatever. Um, just a side note. So, by the way, uh, the um, link is up for the uh, black Z mark. Thank you, Matt. So, what I'm going to go over here and do, um, I have settings here for uh, MDF hardboard. Uh, it's like uh, it's very similar to the material that you would stick on like the back of an old TV cabinet that holds the back together and stops it from shifting around. It's back of super resort. bent. It's super heavy, but it's really cheap. Um, what was that? I said or the back. A lot of people use them for the back of uh, Christmas ornaments too. Yep, that too. Um, so, and they they glue together nice for if you're doing multi layers. It's just it's really nice to work with. Uh, it's a little stinky, so make sure your exhaust is doing good. But other than that, super great. Would not recommend it on a diode. I don't think it would really cut all that great. I already have to uh, beat it up on my CO2 pretty slow. So I imagine doing it on a diode wouldn't be great. You'd probably be better off with like quarter inch ply. But Anyways, so we have our engrave settings and our cut settings here. So I'm going to go ahead and set cut to our black 00, zero layer. Uh, it's going to be 15 speed, 85 power um, on my 100 watt here. And uh, on my engrave layer is 500 speed, 45 power. Um, and that is a... 0.1 line distance on that. So just for, for where we're at. Um, now to save on a little bit of material here, I'm going to just kind of nudge these next to each other because they don't need to be spaced out. Um, and, you know, I like to maintain material. By the way, real quick, while you're doing that, 
40 yep. people are watching with 13 likes. So if you want other people to see this, um, by pressing that like button real quick, it definitely helps people get it like more into their for you page and it might help somebody else out who's taking a look. So if you don't mind smashing that like button, that'd be awesome. Back that'd to be you. great. Thank you, Matt. And thank you for you guys hanging out. Um, so when I'm sending something like this over to the laser, especially because a lot of the time I will make jigs out of remainder material uh, if I have enough scrap. Um, I'm going to send it over using user origin um, rather than, you know, current position or absolute coordinates because it's it's easier for me to fit it on and or even send half of this over and then send the other half over. So um, just keep something like that in mind when you're framing up. You don't need to use a brand new sheet if you have you know, spare pieces laying around. This is a great way to use up spare material so it's not sitting around collecting dust. You're making good use out of it. One more cool idea too, like I, I know some people only have a diode or something like that, or well, maybe don't have a diode, but they've got the fiber. Um, mm -hmm. This is where you could actually, if you've got a diode that you haven't used in a while, uh, you could even use it to just mark the wood and then actually cut this out with a jigsaw or something. Just saying. You like, could, yeah, in theory. Like if going, if I know that's like going way outside the, the box. Use the jigsaw. Yeah, yeah. I'm just saying it's absolutely valid. Yeah, um, I actually a lot of people don't have a gantry. Think about that. A lot of people don't have a gantry, so this could be how you mark up um, the wood and then just mm -hmm. pop a drill, pop a drill in there. CNC is what Frank Taylor just said. So yep, yep, lots absolutely. of different ways yep. to to utilize this. So I'm. Again, I'm and I'm designing this in Lightbird just because that's what I know. That's what's convenient. You could do this in other softwares if you're familiar with the tools to do something similar. But um, you could even export this and just make sure it's to scale and and see and see this out. You could make a a metal jig for this if you really wanted to. Um, yep. Kelly says, "How's your CO two been behaving since the repairs? It's actually been really good. Um, I need to do a little bit of servicing on it. The red light died." Um, which I mean, that's like a, a literally a, a dollar twenty to to just get another one, um, and they don't last forever. So uh, you don't have to turn on that red light. That. You know, walk the street from God. me. Damn it, Matt! Here, <laughs> right. Anyways, Kelly's really excited. Um, By the way, Kelly, you look like the Mandalorian. What the fuck is that about? Look at that. Can't wait to get to the control side. Been waiting for Kelly a long is, time. To Kelly is a handsome man. Look at that! All right. And finally, cut from the easy cad. <laughs> Did not know we had the Mandalorian watching. It's awesome. All right. So we're going to send this over. I have to go turn on my chiller, uh, my CO2, and my air assist. So bear with me one moment. All right. And if you guys have any questions while that's going on, feel free to ask, and I could try my best to answer them. I'm happy to yell answers too if Matt reads them out. Yep, there you go. By the way, this is Kyle's version of this. I mean, obviously, this is his project. Um, but the, the one that I have, and I will... Let's see. We'll go back to this so you guys can see us talking. Um, but the, the project that I have is actually... Um, behind me here it's actually got a circle cut out from the center and it's kind of a pain in the ass to uh square up like or well I square circle up um so actually i really like kyle's idea to the way he did that so just saying also are, are, are you guys feeling funky donkey i'm channeling my inner jimmy jimmy you should be proud of me oh my god no one has ever said they're channeling their inner jimmy <laughs> Uh, all right, all back right, to this so, guy, full screen. Here we go. Oh. Yep. So what we're going to do, my machine is now Maybe. on. My air assist is now on. I need to turn my exhaust on, but I also need to send this file over to my CO2. So I'm just going to call this card jig, send it over. And I'm also uh, going to go ahead and turn the exhaust on. And we will, ch or I'll change my camera over so you guys can watch the cut. Because it's going to take a minute. 
Uh, Kyle, have are you using your Mira? I do not have a Mira. I have a what I affectionately call a blue, blue poo. poo. Um, my blue poo is a uh, more or less a no name machine from eBay from a brand I wouldn't necessarily recommend. Um, and there will be a review on why uh, coming to the channel at some point. Um, but yes, you, you can see it over my shoulder. Oh, eh. back, back behind the CO2 Galvo, you'll see it. Um, I had to basically replace everything except the laser tube and the chassis. Literally. So, Literally. Uh, yeah. Like, uh, Kyle made a list one night. It was just a couple love. of us hanging out. Yeah, every everything he's on his list, he's like, well... I mean, it's only a few things, and he started going, and it was like on to toes. So, and they don't use flip flops up there, so it gets weird. Zane. Yeah. And then, so, how, uh, yeah. <laughs> Let's say, what have I been working on? She asked. Um, I have been working on pizza peels, believe it or not. I have uh, a pizzeria is opening in my town. I'm going to put this on Kyle's screen because it's way more exciting. I, I don't know about way more, but well, then watching my face, they can hear my voice. Um, so I'm actually really excited. I started working with a company downtown and it was really great. Like out of nowhere, I got a phone call. Um, I was actually at work teaching. Um, and at lunchtime I checked my messages and it was someone who, uh, they actually own a coffee shop in my town, which is great because I'm working on putting together some cups for them too, like a cup order. Um, or at least getting the, trying to get that to them. Um, but the cool thing is the pizzeria is going to be a stage. Like it's, it's called stage 201 pizza and it's a, literally a pizza and dining show. So they're going to have comedians, music. Um, it's all kinds of stuff and it's really cool concept. And the guy in our town is a really successful business person, smart guy. So I see it going well. And um, he wants to order swag for the swag shop, too. So uh, I've got a few projects that I'm working on with him, but a lot of pizza peels. And then um, so I'm really excited about that. Uh, what material is that is what Jack in the shop just asked. He might have missed it a minute ago. It's MDF backer board. You can get it at Home Depot for like 15 bucks for a four by eight sheet. Yep. Four by eight sheet. And what is it like? Three sixteenths thick. Um, it's, it's bigger than one eighth. I know that I can, I can measure it in a minute. Yeah. I, I feel like it's like, it's what you use. A lot of people use on, uh, it's like, I think, three it's, techni I think it's technically eighth inch. Is it really? Okay. So there you but go. But it's like, it's heavier than quarter inch. It's, it's closer to the weight of almost half inch plywood because it's so yeah. dense. And the reason Kyle chose that as number one is cheap. Number two, it's plentiful and readily available everywhere. And then number three, he was talking about structural rigidity. So this is something that you can use for the majority of your medium to lightweight objects. Um, so that's something to consider. Uh, but I think he was saying too, like, you know, make sure whatever you're making your project for, uh, be considerate of that. Oh, thanks, Laser. Appreciate it. I guess I could call you Laura too. Dude, look at that fan go. That's some good extraction. All right, what do you have your PSI on right now, by the way? Uh, no idea. It's a fish tank style one, oh, so god. whatever it is. Oh my god, no. So, which means it could absolutely be improved. All right, California Air Tools, if you're listening right now, if you're watching the show. Yep. Uh, Kyle is in need. Whenever see, whenever I do this, I always want to just pull out. This is why I love using the like knife bed. I never use it. You've got the honeycomb in there, right? Yep. Always. Never. never. I don't think I've ever even had mine in. It literally just sits on a shelf. And then the stuff falls right through the knife blades and my extraction gets even better. It's beautiful. Blue poo is throwing down, said uh, Mandalorian. 
Absolutely. I mean, so now I've switched. I'm calling Laser of Love Laura, and I'm calling Kelly Mando. <laughs> Just straight up going Mando. And then Bill said it's called Masonite. Yep, that's another way to look at it. Yeah, I can uh, I can grab a link for it if you want. By the way, this would be a cool since this is kind of cutting and we're talking about it. Um, and by the way, Laser or Laura is laughing at me because I said Mando. But look at this picture. Tell me that that is not Kelly. Kelly is a handsome man. Just saying. All right. It's striking because I mean I literally watched him in four shows. So Kelly, I don't know how you have a laser business while you're on The Last of Us, Mandalorian, uh, Shark and Laser Boy, or was it Shark and Lava Girl? I mean, you've been in a lot on my TV this week. So way to go, buddy! Killing it. I just posted a link to it on Home Depot. Uh, they're not the only ones that carry it. It's it's everywhere, but uh, it's it's called hardboard tempered panel uh mdf backer board i mean it, it goes by a bunch of things but it's eighth inch it's it's heavier than than it looks i can tell you that and um it holds up like really well if, if you like swinging humidity in your shop uh which is a problem for me so it doesn't uh at least for me it doesn't really pick up mold or uh mildew or start to warp uh like like quarter inch wood. Um, so that's kind of why I prefer it for things like fixtures. Yeah. You can toss it on a shelf it. and it's not really going to mess it's up. It's not going to. Yeah. Like one side of it's not going to start kicking up on me uh, if it's not held flat or anything. So speaking of things Pretty laying flat, me. Willie Sims is here. Hey buddy. Hopefully you're yeah. still resting up, man. Yeah. Listening to Take, the doctor. Taking it easy. I hope. I know. Right. He literally messaged me, I think it was last night, and he's like, come hell or high water. I'm, I just have a picture of his voice. He's like, I'm going to be at that laser by God. So I was like, get it, Willie. So hopefully you're doing well, man. And on that note, I'm going to pour myself a nice <laughs> glass of Pepsi. Oh, I thought you were going to be like, I was going to shoot a shot of whiskey for Willie. No, because I don't drink hard liquor anymore. Not with that attitude. Actually, um, my sister uh, got, it was called, um, it, I don't know what like the brand was, but it was strawberry cream flavored moonshine. Oh, it tasted no. like strawberry milk the other day from the liquor store. It was weird. All right. We got a question. I'm just going to leave that question it up. Quick question from Chris Kramer. Do you think a two gallon, 135 PSI ultra quiet hand carry job site air compressor would be okay for an air assist for a diode? Yes. Would that would be it? beyond overkill. Yeah, it'd be overkill city. But the thing is, it's better to have it. And then if and when you decide to go to a larger machine, you've got a good crossover unit. Yeah. Um, so but here. Here's here's my 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 thought process, and I've had a couple of people ask me about this. But um, what you can do is you can actually take uh, like a Y splitter right off the compressor, and on one side you could get full PSI out of it for like blowing jobs off with like a, a like the blow um, what's it called the air spray gun. I'm tip sorry, on I just it. hear you saying blow a lot while I'm typing. What's happening? Damn it, Matt. So excited. what you can do is you you can get a Y splitter for off yeah, of just air an compressor. Air yeah. Air yeah, just yeah, that way you have an air gun so you can blow off jobs or use it for cleaning. <laughs> um, and you know, whatever. By the way, just to chime in, yeah. Frank is saying the same thing. Yeah. And then off the other leg, you can use a um, you can turn the the volume of air down so that you're not literally causing your diode to float in the air with the amount of air pressure you send through it. <laughs> so that that's how I would set it up personally, just so you have an option. And then if you have other air tools in the future, you have the ability to run 
full PSI capability through them and still be able to run your laser at the same time with air assist. Yeah, get an air Dremel. That'd be sick. Definitely yeah. comes in handy. I've used a Dremel a few times on different an items. An air rotary tool. Oh, yeah. Got that Kool-Aid man voice over there. Oh, uh, oh yeah. One thing that I screwed up for, for the keen eyed among you. My engrave layer is after my cut layer, and I'm ashamed. I mean, I wasn't going to say anything. I thought about it, but I was like, well, I mean, it's just going to sit there because I saw you on the honeycomb bed. It's and not that moving. was right after I said, double check your cuts and layers. Whatever. I forgot A to lot drag of people. It. We just had 14 people leave the, the viewing because they were just sickened by your mistake. So I know. I, I deserve it. Yeah. I mean, Frank called you a bad boy, so I'm just going to leave that there for you. <laughs> bad boy. Jimmy has chimed in for the first time in an hour when we talked about liquor. Jack and Ginger. Thanks, Jimmy. <laughs> He's like, I heard you guys were talking about booze. All right, we're almost done. So we just got uh, the one more card cut out here on the left side. And uh, then we're going oh, then for... The engrave is going to happen. Ugh. God. Yeah. Yeah, then the engrave. Glad we could help, Chris. Anytime. Yep. And um, I will say, again, California Air Tools is sometimes you'll find them at Lowe's. Like, I've actually randomly just walked by one when I was looking for some compressor tools. And I was like, what the yeah. hell is this doing on a shelf? And so I guess they do sell them there. Um, but if you can afford, and this is not for a diode user, by the way. This is for someone like um, Kyle here looking for an upgrade. I'm pretty sure we have one on the buying guide is the California air tools mm -hmm. and it's, it's a great tool for somebody like me. I'm not, you know, I'm only working two or three hours a night, four hours at the most um, on weekends. I might have an eight hour day. Uh, Cause there's some people who have like the 40, you'll see people who post like 45 gallons, 60 gallons, like these big, huge tanks. And those are great, but you know, I'm still like a low level shop. So just saying things to think about. And I think the California Air Tool five gallon is two hundred bucks, two fifty. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Laura said she ordered one from Lowe's special order. All right, while you're doing that, I'm gonna look at my light burn because we're getting close to doing stuff. Right. Yeah. All right, so I'm going to write this down. Ugh. Yeah, at some point I'll be switching my machine over to uh, a full air assist kit with probably the ultimate air assist kit uh, and a, just a full compressor. Because at some point I'm also going to do a DIY CO2, so I want to run both of them on on the uh, on the compressor. Does anybody combine a three-in-one laser with a gantry kit like those lower-end plasma cutters? Um, I mean, the theory behind it is sound, but the kit behind it, you may have to order more than it's worth. You can just buy a cutter source, like a thousand-watt Rakus cutter source, and not have to invest in the full machine and save money. Um if you're going to do something like that. 
cutting cutting sources will have a significantly longer fiber optic cable that goes with them so that it can run along the gantry. There you go. I'm prepped for when we actually do stuff I can help with. Hooray! We got it. The timing of this is impeccable, says Amy Moore. Well, I, I hope the info helps. That's why we do this. Ooh, no. Can't remember the channel, but a guy had a 40 watt X tool and he was going to try to use high pressure to oxygen to cut metal. Huh. Uh, that's interesting. I don't, I don't know how well that would work because introducing a flame to high pressure to oxygen. Well, I mean, that's what you do with a fiber cutter. Yeah, but uh, when it's a diode, like. I just see it being a, a blow, like an acetylene torch is what I see happening. Oh. Uh, um, I don't know how well that would work. I, I don't know. I'd have to think about that one. <laughs> Jack in the shop like has the right answer, out, by the way. No. Yeah. <laughs> no. Um, all right. So, uh, added <clears throat> pro tip for you guys who are watching the live stream. You see I have 10 card cutouts, and also uh, because there's 10 card cutouts, there's now 20 little circle dimple cutouts. Um, if you happen to need little card chips or, or, or wood chips to level things out underneath your Galva laser, those are a great use case of recycling material that would otherwise be trash. So um, there you go. <laughs> I see a CO2 Galvo project that says my last fuck and you could sell those for a dollar a piece. Like, there you go. Here's my <laughs> last fuck. All right. Dave Smith has a great question or David, sorry. Does the card slot need a space where the corners meet? So we talked about that earlier, but I'll let Kyle explain it again. Oh, now that just looks like a shitty clock. <laughs> like, <laughs> oh, it's great. Sorry, turning all the things off so I can hear myself. No, you're good. So two things happened. Okay. Frank Taylor said he's going to steal my idea for uh, last fucks or my last fuck uh, ideas for like random cutout pieces. Um, yeah. The other thing, and I saw, I stole that from somebody else, so you are free to steal it from me. But David Smith, I've got a question on the screen that says, do the card slots need a space where the corners meet, is what they asked. Um, I, wait, hold on. Let me reread this. Do you have it up? Does the card slot need a space where it comes... So basically where you had the two slots connect, uh, do you have mm -hmm. the thing that you can hold up? Yeah. That's why I zoomed in on you. So if you look... Let me actually line it up here. Yeah, could you quit breaking everything, Kyle? Jesus Christ. <laughs> okay, so there actually are small spaces. Dave or David... So there you go. But why did you do it that way? Why shouldn't there be more space is maybe what some people might ask or are wondering. Um, the amount of space is irrelevant aside from the fact that you need the center to be con connected. So like, uh, sorry, I'm doing this backwards watching the screen. So there is material here. That is the only requirement I had when making this. If you need more structural rigidity, you can increase the spacing to to widen this out to make more space and then you yeah 
the 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 kind of the key for me was I already had enough more than enough structural rigidity. This thing could probably hold up fifty or more business cards without flexing at all on one side. So I just needed it to be connected so that it was right. there. Um, but if if you're doing something heavy, for example, like uh, a slate slate coaster jig or um, I don't know what's something heavy uh, like metal metal wallets or um, knives flasks knives uh, anything like that um, you can essentially um, yeah you can add add width in between the spacings and you can also reduce the amount of items you do at a time so on a slate jig I might only do four items even though I could physically make a big enough one to do eight or 10 of them at a time. But the problem is, is when you start adding that much weight, you now have to worry about this flexing. And you also have to worry about the jig falling off the rotary. If you don't have it clamped down well, the motor being stressed, all kinds of stuff. Yeah. Well, it, it, everything involved, uh, you, when you start working with heavier things, you need to start taking that into account when making the jig. So, yeah, that, that's the basic idea. Um, you can make those adjustments by making the jig physically beefier uh, and, and de de um, decreasing the cutout width or increasing the amount of material, I should say, in between the items by moving the items further from the center um, to make the, the, the round physically larger and you can get more space that way. Yep. That and you can also... That's what I can say. The other option too is you can make it nine instead of ten. Kyle really wanted to maximize it because he loves productivity. He hates babysitting stuff. That's his. He hates it. So yeah. Smart. So here's my theory, right? Uh, let's say you have, um, let's say you do business cards in bulk for somebody. Let's say you're doing a couple hundred of them a day, right? The more yeah, time you spend you having to switch one out every time when you can just do 10 at a time and let's say you have two fiber lasers, you could run 20, 20 business cards at a time. And if you stagger them, so you start one five in and each business card takes th 10 or 20 or 30 seconds. Now you have two and a half minutes between the two closest time intervals. And then you yeah, have multiple minutes before the, the first one. one needs to be reset. Or to put a so, cup, like to walk over to the CO2 change out a cup that needs to get put in. And so you can yeah. maneuver around your shop. Yep. So kind of looping back. Um, this is, oh, it got offset and now I made it worse. <laughs> as, as per usual. Right, so as you can go. see, Kyle fucked so, up. No, <laughs> so as you can see, you can kind of picture right? The, the top layer versus the bottom layer now where the, the bottom layer is physically just holding everything together and giving you space for your fingers. And the top layer is what's holding the actual item. So um, you don't have to do it that way. You can just do little engrave cutouts if you're doing something like pencils, for example, enough to hold the base of the pencil in place. You don't even have to cut a hole for something like that. But it just... Uh, it gives you a little extra layer of security. And then what I would do at this yep. point um, is I would just take some glue and glue the two layers together, uh, making sure that you have the center aligned so that the jig actually fits through it. Um, one more, one more thought too, if we're, if we're just yep. thinking about ways to use this now, um, let's say that you want to use the base plate instead of cutting multiple base plates, you just want to use that base plate over and over um, a couple of things you can do is literally use magnets to hold them together. If you uh, wanted to get, like you get it engraved down a little bit, super glue some magnets, and then it's easy removal. You can do what I've got, which is uh, a screw or a bolt that goes down mm -hmm. with a little nut um, that puts it together. Um, so you've got a few options to, when you think about it. And that's what Kyle is talking about, optimizing for, for your production, right? Yeah. So what what may work for me, right. May not work for you. Maybe you have a hard time articulating your wrist to be able to use the holes to grab from the top. 
Maybe you need a hole from popping them out of the bottom from the center, or maybe you do a, an end cutout instead so you can pull them out and put them in. Um, That's what I was thinking for like so. the wallets, slide them in, slide yep. them out. So, or you just have the, the wallets have the, the clip on the bottom and you want to cut out like a rectangle to set it yeah. flush. Mm -hmm. Just, just thing. So many cool things. Yeah. So there's a lot of considerations when you're, when you're talking about the design of a jig and how you want it to work for you. Or let's say you run a business where you have an employee, um, and let's say they end up getting like uh, RSI, repetitive stress injury or restri uh, repetitive strain injury. So like doing the same motion over and over, you can actually develop um, kind of like a, a disability with your tendons or your fingers and you end up needing therapy and stuff like that. So being able to modify a jig to work for, for somebody who's having a problem with the way it functions or, or if you don't have one at all, um, to reduce the amount of time you spend doing something like that can really help. So there's a lot of benefits that I think are really easily overlooked with something like yep. jigs and in general. And automation something like time this saving. Now. Yeah. So hope that that helps in terms of tips for, for design, uh, kind of load you guys up with, with some, some bonus options there. Um, let's see. Kelly said beefy jigs and sausage fingers. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. I, got, I got some, some big hands that are unfortunately, uh, they, they get me into trouble cause I can't really do fine motor skill stuff like that very well. Kyle's also six um, foot eight. So having to bend down all the time to like, if you ask Jimmy and Alex, I'm six foot eight. If you actually, ask they said you're seven, else, four, they said you're seven, four. If you ask anybody else, I'm just normally just, six foot. Yeah, so yeah. That's fair. Um, That's normal. Right. Folks. So I think we covered everything with the design. Now we can kind of get into the use of it. Right. All right. So uh, rather than glue this together, because I don't really want to glue my business cards into the jig while it's still wet. <laughs> I want to use it and, and play with it with you guys. Um, I'm going to fit it into the jig. And here's the nice part because they're keyed for the rotary chuck in the center, mm -hmm. it's going to hold it together nicely for me. So I don't have to worry about gluing it right now. I can glue it later. Um, and uh, yeah. And then I'm going to zoom in on you for, before you do that. Do you want to talk about like for people who have never set up? Cause you and I've already got our set up. Like we've seen. This oh, I've, I've moved mine about 45 times since. since yeah. So I'm going to put you on solo layout so you can, I gotta, I gotta go grab my laser cam. Nope. Oh, okay. So, well, so I'll give me one sec. It. Yeah. I'm going to put you up and I got to switch. I don't want to give people, uh, you don't want to give it away. I got it. No, way, I don't want to make your, people stick to their stomach for motion. Sickness. Your laser cam looks like a shitty clock just so you know, like what time is it? I don't <laughs> fucking know. There's 20 goddamn dots on this thing. Right. <laughs> uh, but Frank said it's eight o'clock. So that's good. Um, by the way, Laura, a.k.a. Laser of Love, said there are 40 people watching and only 29 likes. So if you got a chance or if you knew, give that thing a smash. Uh, deer in the headlights, Frank. Come on. Key deer in the headlights. Mm. Yeah, emergency stop on that. Uh, don't, no, don't waste your time, guys. All right. So um, basically what we're talking about and what Kyle's kind of getting ready to show you guys is setting up this rotary tool uh it's a chuck so basically if you've got any questions about setting up your chuck um there are a few things that you need right so if you've never set up a chuck before i'm talking away from the mic but if you've never set up a chuck before uh basically it's got four places for bolts to go in or uh, screws whatever you want to call them the m6s indeed yep and uh, basically, you can you set it up to where it's going to be underneath your laser as centered as possible. Not the actual chuck itself, but you can see mine is really far off to the side. Um, some people have theirs facing from the front. You can, I know this sounds bad, you can do it from the front. You can do it from the back. You can also do it from either side. Um, <laughs> but, Kyle, shut your mouth. Uh, but, and actually, can I, I'm going to go over to Kyle's to show you guys his while he's, 
looking at it. Yeah. And so you can see that right there. The other thing that you'll need is a key. Kyle, I don't know if you've got your key. I've got mine in my hand. So I'll show you guys that. Uh, I will in a momento. Yep. So this key comes with your chuck. Uh, Frank, that is the right hole. Thank you. Jesus, what is <laughs> happening in this chat? Keith. All right. Uh, but anyways, this key right here, basically, it, it's pretty simple. It's either going to bring it to the center or it's going to extricate it further out to the sides. Um, and if you've got the key or if you've got the uh, pins, or not the pins, sorry, the, if you've got the teeth or the pins, it's going to um, go either way. And with Kyle's, the nice thing is his, and I'm going to go back to his because you can see it actually being set up. His just kind of sits right in place and goes straight out. <clears throat> right? Whereas mine is a circle, and I can show you guys mine in a few minutes. Um, mine's a circle, and it's kind of, it still fits nice, but it's annoying because you have to sit it flush. Like his just sits down really nice, flush like that right there. Whereas mine, you kind of have to hold it in place, get it keyed out to about 80%, and then it sits flush. So that's really nice. Uh, the other thing, too, is um, you'll need the Allen wrench to make sure that it's set to 180 degrees facing straight up. You don't want any type of tilt. You want to be in focus. So if you're someone who just came in and you wonder what Kyle is doing, he's literally taking a couple of bolts. He's going to put them in place so that it's square. By the way, how do you square yours off to the edge? Because I know that's something people want to talk about. So yours is set at 180 degrees right there. Yep. And then the next thing that you really need to make sure is that it's square to your engraving space. Yes. So um, we're going to talk about alignment in just a moment. Nice. But uh, yeah. I'm getting so ahead of myself straight here. up and down. Yep. And uh, uh, back up uh, oh God. Sorry for the for the motion uh, sickness. Oh God. Okay. Oh no. Uh, okay. So, or comment. What's up? Willie lost his key to the chuck. What's uh, it? That's uh, okay. Philip said, or flathead. Yeah, I mean, you could use literally anything—a flathead. Uh, you could use. Um, you have sausage fingers that you could use. <laughs> you can square off a dowel that you bought at like Home Depot. Oh, file um, works. I use file once. Yeah, I mean, I would personally, I'd probably go with the dowel option because then it's wood and you can you can make it fit perfectly without screwing up the the squaring of it. It's it's pretty industrial and you're not putting that much tension on it, so you're probably going to be fine. Yeah. <laughs> Frank says, JB weld the it, bolt into it. That's uh, actually I mean, idea. you could do that. Yeah, I mean, that's, that's, that's an option. Yeah, we're, we're done. We're done moving the camera. No more motion sickness. Don't worry. Hey, did you see John Coon said quarter inch racket extension? That's really yep. smart. Quarter inch ratchet extension That's absolutely smart. works. Just make sure it doesn't have a stoop, a super stiff ball in the end because if it does, <laughs> it may get stuck. <laughs> Matt, you're a silly bastard. <laughs> I don't. I'm just here for the show. Uh huh. All right. Um, so, question before you get going. Answer. With that orientation, would you need a higher tower to get focus? We actually just talked about this last time. So, yes. Yeah, so, let me let me go over that actually. Uh, mm -hmm. I'll I'll change camera to talk about that. So, when you're setting up for something like this, obviously you you're you have to have the concern of how much focal height you need from the lens to the item when you're raising it up the entire height of the jig and the rotary combined, right? Yeah. So the benefit of something like this is you can very easily work with like a 110 lens. Um, and I have so much height left over in the tower behind me. Um, but yes, that is a concern. So if you need to do big items that you're jigging on something like this and you're using a really large rotary jig with like rollers, um, then you need a tall tower or a riser yeah. or something. And um, we actually, no, this is a CO2 Galvo. 
And I've actually got mine on the fiber just so you guys can see a couple of different machines doing the same process with different materials. Um, Because when I didn't have the materials to cut with Kyle today, I was like, well, I can still help out when we get to this part. So this is the first time I have removed my 300 lins in like four months because usually I'll do three or four items at once. I mean, you guys know with 300, you can get work done. Um, So... This is where you'll see uh, I've got the 100 lens in, just so you guys know I've got the 110 in. Um, and the focal distance is less than half. So I still have, if you look over at the uh, tower, I still have like 10, or what is it, 10 centimeters or something? Yeah, like I've got plenty of space left um, to go up using the 110. I could probably even use the 200 if I needed to. Um, so if you've got anything from 110 to a 200, you'd be able to use the the same jig that Kyle is creating or even one quarter inch, which is what I've got. So a half an inch on top of um, the height of the, the standard rotary. Another factor too is if, if you're having problems with height, let's say you need to use a large lens or that's all you have. Um, if your laser is at the end of a table, um, what you can do is you can actually stick your rotary on like, some kind like of a platform. folding table in front of the laser and just keep it at a lower height so that the rotary table is rotating closer to the bed height. So mine is on my bed because I can, I can stick it off the side too. It, it's kind of irrelevant, but if you're having problems with height and you only have so much height left in the tower um, and you can't get it into focus, you can do something like that and just kind of incorporate that into the design of the jig as well. The zoom um, on this bad boy. Yep. So that's that's kind of where mine is, just so you guys can yeah. see. I've got it three three holes back, um, and that lines up with right underneath mine. So, and then this is my uh, my get like kind of my jerry rigged system for keeping the uh, exhaust right next to where the cards are engraving. So there you go. And no, this is not the UV. This is, the UV is yeah. over hooked up to the rotary right now, doing some glasses. Right. So I'm going to start talking about um, A, getting aligned, and B, actually using the jig now. So let me switch to my screen again. And we're going to create a new file. I put you on full screen there. Because we're all done there. Uh, if you're creating this for the first time, be sure to save it uh, before you create a new file. Um, and we're going to switch over to the laser we're going to be doing this with. So this is oh, my light branch crashing. He just wanted you guys to look back at me again. Hi there. <laughs> Give me one second. Uh, see. Keith says, you're all playing to my sense of humor way too hard. Mentally 12 years old forever. That is why I teach high school. I am a large 15 year old man. Basically it. <laughs> so that, that's the, that's the downside to, uh, to, you know, beta sometimes it's, we run into, you know, crashes oh. like that, but that's part of the reason why betas are important is so that we can identify why that happens or help identify why and get that reported so they can make it better for everyone. Yeah, we actually found and reported a bug last night for you guys. Two bugs. Oh, nice. Did you get another one? Yes. I mean, you were up till you were up till six, so yeah. Yeah, I was up late. All right, so uh, I'm back up and running now. All right, so present, share screen. I wish we had a night cam of Alex sleeping next to Nugget right now. Like, I know that's what happened. But, all right, I'm going to add you to the stream. You ready? Yep. Go for it. All right, here, here we go. All right. So what we got going on here, uh, Sliper, right? So we're going to go back to the whole uh, idea uh, in this case where we created a jig for a business card. So I'm going to make a, a width of 86 and a height of, I believe it was 55 memory serves. I'm just going to center that up. Uh, the centering shortcut key for Lightburn is P. Um, 
just so we're all in the same same shape there. Uh, and I have to turn the laser on now. And the CO2 Galvo, if you guys have never heard it before, is really loud because it, it uses really high RPM fans. So I apologize if my audio goes down the toilet now, but I will do my best. If you guys have ever seen the Weather Channel when they're reporting on a hurricane, <laughs> that's going to be Kyle. Yeah. So um, what I'm going to do now uh, is we have the outline. We have the option to frame it. We're connected. We're going to frame it up. And this is how we're going to get a line to our jig. Okay. So I'm going to switch over to laser cam. And essentially what we want to do now is we want to align the box that we're framing to what we're doing. And we also need to make sure we're in, in focus because if we're not in focus, it's not going to be the right size no matter what we do. Or it shouldn't be because it's too close or too high. So we're going to make sure we're in focus and then we're going to line the jig up so that the outline is outlining the card perfectly. Another thing you can do that I didn't think to do, um, if you're extra like I am, is when you're getting ready to cut out the jig on your CO2 gantry or diode or whatever, you can engrave in uh, crosshairs into the center of each cutout. Um, you don't need to do that, but that might make it easier for some people to get lined up. So you could do like a crosshair with a circle around it and get that red lighting. Uh, to get a perfect orientation on that card. By the way, it might be um, 53. I can't remember. But we'll figure eh, it out. Whatever. Yeah. First things first, though. Got to get in focus. You have to focus. You got to make sure you're focused down to the depth of the piece, not the top of your jig. So did you focus to the top of your jig or did you focus to the top of the card? The top of matter? the jig for now. I'm just getting that ballpark. Gotcha. But actually, just ask, uh, asking because yeah. I know people might wonder. It's something to consider too, especially if you're on certain machines like a UV laser. That millimeter we're, we're or gonna two. We're going to go for full posterity. I'm just going to load this thing with cards. Um, so on a UV Galvo, um, one millimeter difference would mean that you, it wouldn't get a mark. So you got to be really cognizant of that kind of thing. Uh, what's the depth of field on CO2? What do you think? Three? Uh, in order of, of least depth of field to most depth of field, UV, fiber, CO2. So with a, with a CO2, what is it? Seven. No. Oh, the actual depth of field for like a one ten lens. I've I have no idea. I haven't tried yet. But um, yeah. it has. To, it also partially has to do with the actual wavelength. So the the smaller the wavelength, the the more sensitive to focus it is. The bigger the wavelength, the, less the more the less distance the more you can travel without. Yeah. Yeah. So. We fit. Willie said your laser blows, but that's incorrect, Willie. It actually just sucks. So. You want me to show so, that my jig was loading up? Yeah, go ahead. Because I didn't right. glue this together, the cards float in between the layers if I'm not careful, so I'm just going slow with loading it right now. You're good. I'm going to get out of this. Right? This guy. We'll just do some tandem cards here. MJ, or DS for the first time, or whatever it's called. So this is my quarter inch, for those of you that were wondering what acrylic like might look like, um, 
So basically, I just left the paper on one side so I could see where things are. Uh, you can actually see the screws on it too. Um, so let's see. I can show you guys a couple of things. This remote. Let's see. I'm trying not to move too much here. Yep, there you go. So you guys can actually see the screws that are holding it together there. Um, and so my plate is round in the center. Um, and so it's got similar... Uh, mine actually holds less than Kyle's. So Kyle's is a little more product or productivity focused for sure. Um, and so there you go. Let's try and zoom in here for you. Um, so there's the, the screws holding it together between the two plates. And there's a little nut on the back of it that keeps it all together. Uh, you could use this for save the date cards is what uh, Laura said. Yes, absolutely. Anything absolutely. Yeah. that helps you produce for sure. I heard just, some debate about whether you would focus oh to the card or the jig. Is that right? Yeah, yeah no so debate really. The card. Just it was talking yeah. about it. I was, I was just getting it into the ballpark so I would get at least close to the size, but I figured I'd actually just do it properly. Yeah, and so we're also just talking about the card. different uh, different depth of fields. I just so, want to make sure that we landed on focus to the object because cards are super Yes, cards. always. If we were doing something like boxes, right, or like cups, you know, like okay. the distribution of like cups. And we focus or if you're using the, the UV. The size yeah. would be way off. So. Absolutely. I'm here, by the way. Nugget's asleep. I don't have any lights. You on. fell asleep with Nugget. I can hear it in your voice. Dude, you know, I fucking I can't help it. She's just so cute <laughs> and snuggly, and she's like. It's the baby quiet. smell too. The baby smell yeah. makes you like so chill. She's nice and warm, and just like you just want to snuggle your baby, man. It's like, I can't help it. What a weirdo, ruin your kid. <laughs> by the way, yeah. like I've already got mine framed up for people. That's what we were showing. Is uh, why can't I go to the store and get cigarettes and milk like every other dad? Exactly. <laughs> you'll never leave because you'll never leave. So there you go. So, <laughs> well, this is uh, but yep. did you, Kyle, did you make this one live? Did yep, you both live? Make live? No, uh, Kyle made his live. I was one pre-existing. I I made mine uh, scratch. Not bad for just fucking throwing it together, man. Look at that. I know. What's so, that? yeah. So. Uh, I, what we have left to do basically is frame it up, which I I, I did, um, and uh, we're gonna throw a little design together to throw in the card on stream, and then we're gonna go through running it together. We're so professional. I, just, uh, I got you guys are so quiet there for a minute. Holy moly! Well, and then you have like the night owl. Sitting in the dark, chanting. Ooh. <laughs> Jesus, um, yeah, you turn your mic I, I I love I love uh, Laser of Love's idea. It was Laura, right? Yep. I think that was the first time I've, I I she mentioned her uh, her name. I'm not sure uh, I like it. I just I like, like Laser. I like idea. Hey, Laser. I I say love. Weirdest dream, by the way. I just have to tell everybody about it really quick. Um. So I was at my aunt's I, house in New York City visiting her, and uh -huh. you were there, Kyle, and Matt was on stream at like digitally with us because I was sleeping and listening to you guys talking. So you and I are at my aunt's house with Miranda and the kids, and we're literally setting up like a station for me to engrave and do a live stream live from her house. And like okay. people keep like coming and going from the house and like butting into the room and like touching all the equipment and stuff. It was just very bizarre. It was just very bizarre. Interesting. So, yeah, it was because I was listening to you guys while I was sleeping, I think. So, okay. Yeah. Okay. I don't know. I don't know what random. Save it, really it for uh e stop. Emergency stop .net. Dot net. Yep. Yep. All right, Save I'm gonna I'm gonna get going on this design here. Yeah, back to work. Right. Oh my God, Willie said he came in to crack the whip. More like he's like, "What's up, guys?" 
I got a story to tell you. <laughs> All right. So I got this lovely Ellie logo here. We're going to. Uh, oh, it's the PNG. Whatever. Trace. Yeah, I guess I'll do this instead of my phone number email. Well, he said he's got PTSD from your, oh no, from your machine. <laughs> That's awesome. It's terrible, but it's comical. I'm a bad person. All right, there we go. And turn that into a toolpath. So uh, when you're designing a file to run on a jig like this, it's important to note that you can change the orientation that your rotary jig is rotating around the laser, which means the card orientation can change. So in this case, my all of my cards are facing horizontally, not vertically. So what we're gonna do is I have a horizontal card here. I have my tool pass set to the size of the card. So I'm centering everything to that, that outline with the orientation the way I want it to run. So if I rotated the, the design 90 degrees, only half of the design would land on the card, right? So that's another consideration when you're using something like this. And what I'm going to go ahead and do is apply my settings here. And uh, we're going to get after it. So uh, I'm going to change over again to... Oh, sorry, come back, Matt. Um, the laser cam and uh, that's again framing it up this is what we're looking at so now if I come back to Lightburn what we're going to do is go up to laser tools repeat marking and the way we want this set up is the count generally is going to be how many slots you have in your in your jig. In my case, that's 10. And now if we hit calculate, it's going to tell, oop, I got my, my increment wrong on my, uh, my thing. Oh, well. So uh, basically, you have your count, you have your increment, and this is what tells the laser or the controller in Lightburn uh, how far to rotate uh, around in order to get to the next item. So if you overshoot or undershoot this, it's not going to land on the next card. It's going to land short or too far. Now, what you can do is if you want to run less cards than your jig is set up for, so let's say you want to run five instead of 10, you can set the count if you don't know the, the degree increment, hit calculate, and then change it back to what you want because this isn't going to auto change for you. So now I can run five cards using my 10 card jig if I want. So... If you want to run less items, that's okay. The same works for the opposite. Let's say you have um, a, a four slate rotary jig set up and you want to run 15 or 16 of them. You can actually have it running on one and as it rotates around and gives, you, gives the laser a new one to engrave, you can pull the one that's done off and put a new one on. And now you still have four queued up and ready to go. So there's, there's a lot of flexibility and options to this.
Um, before we hit start, I know it's tempting. We need to go into setup and make sure this is actually set up for us. So we want to make sure, A, that it's set up for axis type rotating, for this type of jig, anyway. Steps per rotation, we need to make sure is set to what our normal rotary driver is set to in our machine. So in my case, that's 12800. Um, if this is set wrong, it's not going to rotate far enough or it's going to rotate too far. So we need to make sure this is accurate, just like your normal rotary settings. I have it set to return to start position, and that's just preference. You don't need to worry about homing, usually, um, but everything else is more or less going to be run it as it is. Um, when you start getting into fine tuning, you can you can mess with this, but for the purposes of getting up and running, these should work. Um, we're going to go ahead and click OK, and we're set up. And now what we can do is we can hit start. So I'm going to send you guys back over to the laser cam. I'm going to turn on my extraction fan, and we're going to hit start. I'm glad I made it for the, uh, the grand finale. Also, um, Sargon's ask, uh, or no, uh, Nebajosa is asking, how do you have 1.4 light burn? Um, Kyle's on the light burn beta to help test for bugs. So if we get pre-release versions of the software so that we can make sure things are working right before they go out to the public. Yeah. Um, in terms of if this will work with EasyCAD 2 or not, um, the process is similar in terms of setup, like what we did with the jig. If you want to use Lightburn and go through the same steps, you can do that. But the actual settings in EasyCAD 2 are going to be a little bit different. Um, I actually haven't run this in EasyCAD 2 recently. So, uh, but the process is a little bit different. Sorry about that. All right, so we're ready to start. So I'm going to go ahead and hit the start button. You guys saw everything up to this point. And here's the grand finale. Let's see if it works. Oh, it's satisfying, isn't it? And here's the fun part, right? It's hands-free. Look, Mom, no hands. No hands. It's slipping a little. So yeah, we got a floating jig situation. Yeah, I didn't so, glue the layers together yet. So I think the torque from the the rotation is. Yeah, dang. it does. But that's where you can also change your speed too. Like you can actually change the rotation of your chuck, the speed of it. So if anybody's got a situation like that happening. And then Kyle, when you're done, if you want to. You, we can use mine to show people one more time in case they just showed up. Yeah, yeah. You can see yep. the two layers where the thumb holes are to grab the cards out. The we all know this because we were here the whole time. Oh, gosh. <laughs> yep. Nah. No, we're gonna send it. It's gonna keep going. Like, yeah. We're gonna see the carnage. Let's see the damage. A, a little duct tape might have been. Hey. Eh. Well, we this is this wasn't on the fly. We've got the one that's already. Uh, no, I know, I know. What do you call it? We've got the. Mine is nutted and bolted together. Nuts and bolts. At least the the torque from it starting and the torque from it stopping are kind of evening each other out a little. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So would you say it's torque working or twerking? Yeah, it's twerking. Ew. Yeah, you can kind of see the the little my sausage finger holes there. Are, uh, I love those by the way because you can just grab the shit out of those. That was so awesome. Yeah, dude, that's why I put them there. Yep, love it. And it rotates back to number one. Good good. To go. All right, I'm ready to go. Let me go to light burn real quick. So. Yeah, get 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 you on there, bud. Yep. Desktop too. If somebody wants to put me on there, so I'm gonna go with my standard card. I feel like it's showing mirrored. 
Is it showing mirrored or no? You're, you're good. No, you're okay. good. So I go up here to laser tools, right? So I've got this all set up. I've already done everything that Kyle taught me. I go to repeat marking. I unfortunately only have eight card slots. As Frank said, Kyle's is bigger. Thanks, Frank. <laughs> Not that size matters. It's how you use it. Damn it. Right. So then I hit my frame. I've got my stuff ready to go. And let's go over here. Pardon me for using OBS. Look at this. All right. So let's see. We should. Looks like I got shitty Wi-Fi for a second. Here we go. Going. Nipping. It's going. A little back. Is it your video feed that's backwards? Yeah. Okay. This is not my favorite setting, but whatever. It works. Boop. I need something with the IR sensor. I guess I could zoom out. Or not. Probably the remote's not working. See, Matt's is actually held together with screws, so his isn't going to shift yeah, you around can actually, the bottom. It's got a nut on the bottom of it, and it's actually got a place for magnets, too. So this is one that's more... Designed for hot swapping stuff? Yeah, for hot swaps. Exactly. Yeah. So there you go. I threw a blue one in there just for funsies. See what happens. So, but what's cool about Kyle's while this is going, and you guys are just kind of seeing it going, um, I really like Kyle's setup just because there's so many options to play with it and make it your own. Um, yeah. By the way, suggestion, you guys have any suggestions for the laser being where it is right now? For you guys who are used to camera-ing? Uh, what? Should I do anything with it for that IR? Uh, no, you're fine. Okay. So, yep, so that's it. So it's going, and what's cool is it is nailing the shit out of the, the center of this card. And I literally followed every step while Kyle was doing it so we could see if it worked. You know, because that's the whole point of the channel is showing you guys how to do stuff. So, yep. like, as Kyle was doing that, that's why a few times I was, like, really quiet, and Kyle was like, oh, shit, it, Matt, hello? I was literally just trying to make sure we're good to go. How exciting yeah. is this? Like, it's... <laughs> This is where Michael, by the way, came on. You missed it, uh, Alex. Michael showed up for a little bit to call us super nerds. Yeah, I mean, he's not wrong. Yeah, no, no, Kyle's <laughs> definitely nerding out on it, but it's great. And I usually do a way more, like, simple card, but I don't know. Just, we're, we're going big tonight. Big chunky boy. So um, I have one more tip. I'll show after after your things are done. I gotta get rid of a piece of grass up at the top there. There you go. And I would be cool like Kyle and show myself hands free, but I'm not cool enough with OBS yet to do that. You guys can't hear Nugget's rain video, can you? Nope. Okay, good. Last one. Is your camera not center on OBS, Matt? Uh, it's probably just the fact that I was playing with it with the remote control. Just curious. You know me. All about precision. So Frank is asking a question. Is there a way in Lightburn to have it rotate, but do a different engrave on each card. And the answer to that on this is no, because it's called repeat marking. So that's going to be pretty much the answer for that. You can, you can use variable text. Yeah. Um, so variable text and anything along with that, any of the commands that that can use, that will work for 
uh, for this because it'll work for any design. Yeah. So you, you can actually increment the values in the card from one to the next to the next. So if you have a CSV file with a hundred names on it, um, and you're doing like, uh, I don't know, thank you cards or something. Um, you can have it go through the list one by one. So one card will have person A, one person, per, the next card will have person B, and so on and so on and so on. We have a great episode See, on that in the yes. Yellow Crash course. What I did was set Frank up for, like, you know, feeling sad, and then Kyle lifted him up. Literally just lifted um, him up. Is that one of those under promise over deliver situations? <laughs> yes. Michael's asking so, Kyle, possible release date for 1.4. We don't get release dates, unfortunately. Yeah, we we, we just we just help test and give feedback. Uh, any that that's kind of everyone's role as a beta tester. So we don't get any any bonus insider information. We're literally we know what you guys know. Um, we we just get the the crash reports <laughs> that we have to send in. That's the only difference. Yeah. Um, I'm going to show one last thing here uh, as a tip. So this is the design we did. I already changed the angle increment because I'm silly and had it set to the wrong thing. But uh, what you can do, uh, I'm going to ungroup this all. And I'm going to grab my center. This is my, my chuck, right? This is how I grab onto the jig. So what I can do is I can grab onto this and I can go over to my art library and I can save just this by grouping it. So now it's considered one item. And I can import that into my jigs library. So I can go here, import graphic from project. And I can call this Chuck Rotary Jig Design. Base, or, base, you know, base, call base. it whatever you want. Yeah. Or Chuck Rotary Faceplate. We'll call it that because I like. You should that. call it sausage finger base plate interface. Absolutely not. <laughs> so we're gonna cl- we're gonna click OK. You guys get the point. So we're gonna click OK, and now this is in here in my art library in Liper. I can import this directly into Liper, oh, and anytime so I need to create another fixture, and I can completely skip that whole process and just jump to the next step now. I don't have to worry about measuring my, my truck fingers or uh, jaws. I don't have to worry about doing the circular array. I don't have to worry to make sure that it's it's actually set up right. I, I can just take this and I can run. Yeah, I was going to say, show like, me that one more time. Like, let's pretend I didn't know how to do it. Yeah. So <laughs> I'll, do it with the in- I'll do it with this entire thing. Okay. So I'm going to highlight the entire thing. No, it's got to be grouped together. Anymore. It has to be grouped together. You can only import a single item as a as a art item in the library. So by grouping it, it identifies it as one item. So I can click on this, have the whole thing highlighted, import graphic from project, give it a label, click OK, and it is now imported into our art library. So I can zoom out. Ooh, that is so cool. Double click on it, and it is now imported into whatever project we're working on. So if I wanted to make another jig tonight, I can just take the center of my jig, and I can start. You know, okay, uh, here. Yeah, let's say I want to make. Let's say I want to make a. Uh, um, let's say I want to make a slate item, right, or a slate jig. It's a hundred by one hundred because it's roughly four inches, let's say. Center it up to this. Circle array. Circle array. We want four copies. What a lovely looking spiral graph. I love spiral yeah. graph. Don't talk shit. Um, <laughs> I got to go backwards here. So I didn't center this to my work bed, so I don't know what exactly is center. But I know the tips are touching right now, so... Yeah, they are. That's good. But it doesn't really matter because what I can do is I can just... Okay, this yep. looks good. I know it's not center. And we already talked about... What I can do is right if now. this is grouped... Yeah. And if these are all grouped, what I can do is I can click both of these and I can center it that way. So while it's it's 
you know, it's not as foolproof as the other way if something is like off or skewed or has a weird different height because I know the dimensions on this are all the same. I know this is going to work. Now I just have to make a cutout circle. And I can highlight everything and center, center. And now I can just send that over to the CO2 and that's one layer. And I can duplicate this. And I can delete these. There's my base plate and my slate jig. That's now done in how long was that? A minute? Not even. So there you go. I mean that that's that's the, the process behind getting set up with you know a powerful you know design process. And if you, you get the rotary the concepts. that everybody has. Everybody has this rotary. Yeah. You don't need a special rotary table. And you can do it. The other nice thing, too, is that a lot of those rotary tables require you to have a two axis machine. But a lot of these easy cat light boards don't have two axes to work with. They only have one. So you can do this with your normal rotary tool with an easy cat light board that only has one access input. There's a lot. There's a lot here. It's, it's substantial. Yeah. Um, so real quick, Frank says, yeah. Kyle makes it look so easy. This is this is day two with this. I started messing with this at what time was it last night, Matt? Last like three night, in the morning. I started or something around around like one. Yeah. Yeah. So literally getting, getting the design set up is literally just a, a matter of going through the process that we covered earlier in the stream where we talked about um, getting kind of like the, the, the idea behind the design. If you get the process down, you can take the little bits that you save that are core to what you need to make the design work, save those in your art library, and you can now use the, the rest of the tools that we went over tonight and make it super fast. The smaller well, the object, too, the more substantial this is. Like, imagine how many pens you could stack on a 90 degree before rotating right. 90 degrees. And um, one of our old guests on the Laser Source podcast, Alex Campbell, used to have things on a setup like this set up so well that while it was marking the one set he could literally offload the ones that are done and load the new ones in before it rotated so it was just infinite it just kept going i, I mean like there's you know it, there's crazy amounts you could do here and uh frank taylor saying you know he only has a, a roller rotary uh frank chuck rotaries especially these big chunky heavy ones which are the ones you would want for this kind of setup uh, are super cheap. You can get them for like 80 bucks. So, um, and they're super easy to work with. And if, as long as you get the right aviation connectors, I mean, you're, you're good to go. So definitely an inexpensive investment, certainly cheaper than the rotary tables that are designed. Yep. And honestly, there's some people who have multiples and they would sell them so cheap. They'd be glad to get rid of them. Yeah. I have like, like, four. I think I've got four. Yeah. Three. three I, I've got, uh, yeah, Kyle over there is like, I have 84. No, I have I have four. Because so a lot of people four are back. Laser. That's a good point. I, th yeah. I think the rest are ring rotaries. So yeah. you could easily literally go on to uh, the, if you're on LMA, like literally put a post up there, like looking for Chuck Rotary. And I bet you 50 bucks people would be ready to, to send that to you. Pretty much instantly, yeah. 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 If, if you do like wedding gifts, for example, if you do uh, like, groomsmen's knives or uh flasks or whatever i, I mean I you could literally oh jig anything like this that's not super heavy and you know what else <coughs> mention that um not everybody's going to want to do this so if you want to make a killing design these for the standard d80 rotary and put them up on the laser everything marketplace yeah i mentioned that earlier i was like kyle just made some money yeah, because these these would sell like hotcakes done so that people just order them, they show up in a bag, and then they put them on their rotary and put their rotary up, you know? I mean... Nothing. So, two things I've got. One is a question, one's a comment. One, yeah. Kyle does make things look really easy because he's very good at doing like the step-by-step -step process. Um, but, number so that's number one, uh, that you can go back and watch this because like I've gone back and watched so many of the videos in the channel. So the good news is once this gets put up, it's there. Um, and then number two, if I, so I know you can do going back to the question that Frank asked earlier um, for the cards, like business cards, 
I know you can do variable text. Could you literally make every single card different? I thought that answer was no. Anything that is included in variable text can be included in that way, yes. Okay. All right. Okay. So, but, okay. Cool. I like um, that. I'm going to do like a hyper quick edit of this too. It's going to be sloppy, but I'm going to cut out the big spans of like waiting for stuff. Um, there was no waiting. I did wonderful keep commentary. Keep it super punchy. I'm going to remove commentary. Oh, uh, shit. Yeah. Sorry. About that. And, <laughs> That's um, fair. So, I'm here for a shorter guide. Hopefully, this time next week, I should have like a super punchy kind of like instructional version of this stream up for you guys to watch and rewatch without having to scrub through the live stream. So, yeah. Yeah. Um, Frank says he's giving away secrets. I give away my secrets because they're not secrets. I'm, t I'm sharing my knowledge with you guys because that's what Ellie is all about. He's um, a teacher too. Whether I go to sell these on the marketplace as a, a vendor in whatever time the marketplace actually goes live because we don't have a date for that yet. Um, I don't know. That, I don't also know. Made by if, if there's value in that and you guys want to see that, I could make that happen. But I also want to teach you guys how to do it so that if you'd rather learn the process, you're able to. If you don't want to spend your time doing that, then well, cool. I could I could the, sell them the for priority, a reasonable price. But the priority is always going to be for you guys to be able to do it yourselves. Well, and plus then, you yeah. guys may have some strange objects that are just your stuff that you do, and that's really yeah. important to be able to make those. The, you know, the secondary priority is for you guys to be able to help each other. So if we, you know, we can't serve everybody. So if if Kyle teaches enough of you how to do this, then some yeah. of you can put them up on the marketplace and you'll get compensated for your time and effort and help other people in the community by providing this for them. That's our second priority. So it's, it, there's, yep. yeah, like Kyle said, there's no secrets. It's, you know, we're, we're just trying to push out as much. We're in this together. As yeah. we yep. out. And two um, things real quick. Okay. I was going to say, Kelly, Rotary Turntable changed our business model. And that's what's so cool about Lightburn doing this. And Alex, you weren't here for this, but who does Kelly look like to you? Think TV shows. I don't know. Did you guys both agree on an answer earlier? Oh, I just named it Mandalorian. Tell me that does not look like the Mandalorian. Oh, a little Pedro Pascal going on there? Yeah, dude. That's yeah, it. That's Pedro. I see it. I see it. Now so Kelly is known as Mando in my eyes. <laughs> So here's the other piece of that, too, on why the marketplace is really good for if somebody wanted to sell these. There's a lot of people that don't have a gantry system, no mm -hmm. diode, no CO2, and maybe they don't have an interest in having one. Yep. So maybe there is a market for that. But like Alex said, the priority is, is sharing the knowledge. If somebody doesn't have a, a need or a want to make it themselves and would rather share the wealth and get it from somebody else, that's cool, too. But I mean, having the knowledge out there is what's important to us. That's a really good point. We've seen the success on the LMA of people that have been cutting focal sticks for other people, right? That's like a process that requires a gantry laser that you only need if you have a Galvo laser and people help each other out with that all the time. And that's been highly successful. So that's in the same vein as this. Absolutely. Yep. Um, and likewise, there's a lot of things that I will probably never need or want to engrave that I just don't have a need for a fixture for where somebody else will. Yeah. Maybe, maybe I never get into doing like bottle of those, those minimalist wallet things. Right. Yeah. But somebody else does a, a crap ton of them and I just don't want to touch them ever or something. Somebody else could make a fixture for that or they can make their own sure. or whatever. I mean, there's yeah. so many things out there, so much variety, so much customization. Well, um, do you guys have anything else? Do you want me to close? Yeah. Cause I'm here. Um, do we want to answer the last questions in chat? Oh, did not see. Uh, yeah, sure. We There's only there. one more, I think. Uh, Frank says, "Is there a reason why fiber lasers go up to 100 watt? UV only goes to 10, because UV, while it is based loosely on what a fiber laser is, it is filtered. So you can only get so much power through that filter media before you damage it." Um, they make 100 watt UV lasers and they cost $50 million. They're also yeah. the size of like my garage, aren't they? Isn't that the one we saw that has the arm? They're yeah. enormous. Yeah. Yep. Uh, it literally said send, send email for quote, which you know means. Yeah, that was the day lunch. we were checking out coherence. It, you're, <laughs> you're taking out an enormous loan. Yeah. yeah. So 
uh, essentially, the, that's the reason why. UV isn't designed to, to do that kind of work that a fiber is. It's designed for surface marking. And the only reason why they have ultra high wattage, and I say that loosely because we we see 100 watt, 1000 watt fiber cutters. They use like 50 watt UVs to cut silicon dyes for making processors. Yeah. And that's why they're really expensive. They're really specialized. They're, it takes a lot to make them. And the filter media that they use has to hold up to the amount of power that has to be sent through it in order to get that usable 50 watts out of it. Always remember, uh, CO2 is the chainsaw, fiber is the sword, UV is the scalpel. Yep. By the yep. way, there was good one for different question. Things. Sargon, we didn't see a question mark. That's why I missed it. I thought he just was making a statement. So um, just wondering the height of the rotary at 90 degrees, will it require the uh, higher Z arm for the 220? And uh, I have a 220 lens and the arm is 50 centimeters. So we talked about that a little bit I mean, earlier. Definitely going to 100% depend on what you're jigging up. I was about right? to say it's like for, for business cards, no problem. Tumblers so my different than business cards. This this value may change from rotary to rotary, but my current rotary that's under my laser right now is uh, about nine and a half inches, just shy of that. So it's about 236 millimeters tall, and then you're putting the jig on top of that. Um, so you you can guesstimate how big of a tower you need if you know what your focal distance is yeah, from your lens to whatever object you're engraving. Um, because you're essentially stacking the two values together. Chris Horob is also asking, this is great. Will this template be available on the Laser Master Academy? I, I will do you one better. Kyle, after the stream, can you upload this project to the community project database on the website? I would be happy to. Okay, great. If you guys haven't already checked out the community project database, you should. Can we pull that up really quick, Kyle, and show people that it's there? Uh, yeah, let me pull um, it up. I worked really hard on this, and it's, it's kind of uh, underrated. So um, if you guys haven't seen it, you can head to lasereverything.net and head over to the download section. And in the download section, you will find the community project database where literally anyone can upload their project files for everyone else to use for free. Uh, and it's actually got a good number of stuff in there. Uh, we, we hand approve them, so they're all approved by hand. Uh, by one of the site administrators or myself. Uh, so here we are now on the website, and uh, I believe it's under resources, uh, and then community project database, yep, right here. And there's a ton of this projects. Is, this um, is everything other people have already uploaded, all of and our who uploaded it, so if you use it, you can say thank you to them in the yep, Discord. Uh, and a bunch of projects from previous episodes too, like our gradient test download from the photos episode or the gold test settings from the gold cutting and gold engraving episodes. Um, all of that stuff is in here as well. It's all available for free for everybody. So yes. um, uh, yeah, after the stream, Kyle, if you don't mind, we could throw that up. Also, while we're here, Absolutely. do you want to show off the new reviews page? Um, Kyle and I, it's, I believe yeah. it's under buying guide. Uh, Kyle and I don't have time to make videos for every single thing that we want to review. Uh, so for some of those things, they are going to show up under here. Uh, the normal video scripts will also go up under here as well. I was testing out with the Mira 9 earlier. It gives you a breakdown of all of the vital points that we score machines on so you can visualize it and actually see the pros and cons and how it rated in each category. That's and the super entire cool. review script is there. The only thing that's missing from this one is the thumbnails. Uh, I want to like screen capture some some images so that I can reference them throughout the reading. So it's not just text, but outside of that, it's done. And uh, we're going to add all of our previous reviews, all of our new reviews, and some things that we don't even review on the channel at all uh, will also be featured here. So I just wanted to show that off too. I really like your bar graphs. I'm such a visual person. Like that helps a ton. Yeah. I'm good. I'm going to refresh this. Yep. I know it's up. I love it, it so yeah. much. Yeah. It's cool. Um, so anyway, that's that. Uh, but yeah, so after the stream, um, please go check out the uh, the community project database. If you don't see it there, I'm sure Kyle is working on it. Um, and, and he'll go ahead and get that up there for you guys. So you can download this and just try It'll it be up tonight before uh, before attempting to make your own for sure. Yeah.
We good? There. Yeah. All right, cool. Well, oh, um, thank you. We had one new. Sorry, oh, I was going to say. Thanks, Joseph. Joseph Waldner. Yeah, earlier on, I missed it. And I was just scrolling back through and saw that. So, Joseph Waldner, if you're still here. Welcome. Thank you for the support, man. Appreciate that. And yeah. uh, thank you to you two gentlemen for hosting a lovely evening of education and science and knowledge. Sorry I was late for the, the, the Friday Live Day, but we got uh, Saturday Live Day instead. This is probably it's one of Friday the, somewhere. This is probably one of the most substantial and potent Friday Live Day episodes ever. So um, it was a really good one. I think there's there's a lot of really, really good stuff in here. I, I tried to keep it on point and educational. If you guys got value out of this episode, please don't forget to smash the like button. And after, uh, actually, you can just do it right now. I was going to say on the re-upload, but this isn't a podcast episode, so this stream's going to stay up. So go ahead and like Help other people Thank find you. the content. Let other people know the content is good. If you haven't subscribed yet, only like 20% of our viewers are subscribed. Make sure you subscribe, smash the notification bell so you get notified the next time we go live. If you love the content and you want to support what everybody here is working so hard towards, please consider going to sign up for the Laser Master Academy. It's the number one way to support the channel. You get a bunch of bonus goodies for signing up. It's a brilliant community full of awesome people that want to help you learn and grow. You can find me and Kyle and Matt there. A bunch of great stuff. You can find out more about that over at masters.lasereverything.net. Uh, go pick up some merch. We're all rocking merch today. I love that Mactron hoodie, dude. I still don't have one. And um, I don't know. I guess that's it. Uh, go watch. Leave a leave a heart in the comment section for Matt right. being my co-host and hooking me up with some help tonight. Once this uh, once this refreshes, definitely leave a comment. It helps with engagement. If you haven't already seen it, after the live stream ends, go watch our latest episode of the Laser Source Podcast: Solutions for Fixing a Lack Lack of Motivation. So if you want to try this, you're having a hard time getting started. Go listen to that episode. It's really, really good. Uh, yes. The guys have a lot of great, great, great suggestions. And if the first thing you want to engrave with your rotary table is a cool camo pattern or other multi-layer vector, go check out my recent episode on multi-layer vector prep. Uh, it's another very powerful episode. Um, that stuff. one is not underrated. That one's blowing up. It's almost at 4,000 views in like three days. Jimmy's so pissed. Um, and Jimmy's got a new episode coming out soon about a uh, honeycomb bed that he ordered from Light Object that he's having specially modified to fit his own tech, which is really cool. So that'll be out soon nice. as well. Uh, I but finally have the Laser 101 video almost ready. Is it almost ready? Yeah, really. Nice. All right. I'm yeah. So Matt's got some stuff coming out too. And Kyle's got a new uh, Light Burn for Gantry crash course. crash course episode coming out yeah. soon as well. So lots of stuff. There's lots of stuff coming out. I know we've been a little quiet. We've been focused on the marketplace, but lots of great content coming out for you guys. So stick around. Thank you so much for watching. And we will see you in the next one.